Hello everyone, my name is Sargoth, and I'm here to do a brand new Let's Play server play series on Minecraft. With this video series, I'll be running on Minecraft's version 164 using Forge 953. The server that I'm using will be using a custom mod pack, pretty heavily modded as you can see from the bottom left here, that it, it, including the compatibility mode and all the various different options on the mods. The system is reporting that there are 263 mods loaded. This thing is packed. Now, the server, since it's just generating the world right now, it's just going to be a minute, and I'll be right back as soon as I'm actually in the world. Okay, everyone, we are back. The world has been generated, and, ooh, what do we got here? We got a chicken with an axe. That is part of one of Aichun's mods there. I need to get that chicken. <sighs> what a way to start. Start Minecraft by chasing a chicken. Okay, uh, so there we go. Okay, the first thing you probably notice there is I had this weird little black funny effect as soon as I actually beat up that chicken. Now that is part of the Morph mod. Morph is made by iChun, and it allows you to take the form of enemies that you have previously de defeated. Now that actually can include other players. So I can actually look like some other pl look like other players if I defeat them. Now, since this is Minecraft, one of the first things we're going to normally want to do here is we're going to want to start off with some wood. And we have some creepies. I am no shape to defeat, to defeat the creepers. Particularly since I'm a little chicken right now. Yeah. Well, okay. Chicken Star is now going to go back and collect the damage here and see what we can do. As I mentioned here with the morph mod, it has actually turned me into it, uh, let me turn into any enemies I previously defeated. And one of the effects that I have, because I'm a chicken right now, is I have the feather falling advantage. If I fall down any type of height, I'll be falling at a slow speed um, and not take any fall damage. Now this can be really handy, particularly when you're over ravines or any deep pits here, to avoid falling damage. Now chickens can't fly, so I'm going to be pretty much not in any type of a decent shape to actually get out of any of the holes that I fall into, but at least I won't, fall, I won't die when I get in there. Now, one of the mods that we have also installed on here is called Tree Capitator. Tree Capitator will let you, uh, when you chop down a tree with an axe specifically, it will chop down the entire tree and not just the one block that you're hitting. Now, the advantage of using the tree capitator type settings is it will let you just beat up the entire tree, chop it down. Um, it will take roughly the same amount of time as it would if you were to break down each individual block, and it would damage the tool as much as it were if it were the each of the blocks, but you get the advantage of having the entire tree chopped down and not having to climb up there. Now, I just started off by creating a crafting table, but I'm going to actually modify the crafting table, which is just place it alone in the crafting grid, to make myself a crafting station. Uh, crafting stations are added by Tinker's Construct. The idea behind a crafting station is I can put stuff in the crafting station, close it, doesn't spit out. Open it back up, whatever I was building is still in the crafting station. Now, I'm just going to probably over here just quickly make a couple of quick tools. Number one, the axe to chop down this tree, and a wooden pickaxe just to get some other stuff. Now, the pickaxe here, like I, the, the axe I said here, um, tr I can using using the capitator. I'm chopping down the tree. As you can see here, it is slow. But once it chops down the tree, it will use up the entire tool's durability up to the point where it has broken as many of the blocks in the tree as it can. Now this is a wooden axe, it has 59 uh, durability, so it's going to go and chop down here and break down 59 blocks of wood. If it is enough to take down the entire tree, I will have a little bit of an axe left. If it's not, then the axe will break and I will have some bits of the tree still floating in the air. It's just about done. Raining wood. And the axe is gone. You can see the parts of the tree have left been left floating up there, but we have that chopped down. Now let's just go over here and pick up the rest of this wood. Okay, you also saw me running right over here. 
over something else here called aluminum gravel. That's part of the Tinker's Construct set of mods. Um, Tinker's Construct lets you create custom tools using a variety of different materials. You can use stone, um, nether rack, <laughs> let's see, what else? Metals, wood, slime. It's a really great tool and it works really well. It's just, you need a lot of it to set up. As you can see now, I have 59 wood. That's exactly how much I expected based off of my axe. I can't do anything more with this, so I'm just going to leave it be for, uh, for now. I will need a better axe. And for that, I need stone. Well, starting off here, we have a bit of an area to dig into, a hillside, so I'm just going to start digging down a little bit with the dirt here until we can get a little bit further down. Okay. As for the rest of the mods on the server, you can see here we have something called Soapstone. There is a mod installed called Underground Biomes. The general idea is it adds a little bit more flavor to your underground uh, area here by adding different types of stone based off of stones, a uh, type of stone that you can find in the real world. Underground biomes will add some soapstone, church, schist, ni nice. Mm. If you played Terra Firmacraft, you'll probably be a little bit more familiar with the types that you get in here. But for now, it works pretty much identical to the way normal stone works. Um, 90 something percent of the recipes will recognize it and for those that don't there's a way to convert this type of stone to a normal stone. We also have over here some Emasher resource limestone. Now the mod that's actually displaying stuff in the upper middle over there is called Wela what you see uh, what oh, sorry what am I looking at? Uh, it's a great mod here that gives you a lot of details as to what mods uh, an item is from and gives you a limited set of the properties that that item has. For when you take a look at things like a vanilla lever, it will tell you whether the lever's flipped on or flipped off. And for other mod resources, it really depends on the mod what information it's going to give you. Um, we just need to get in here a little bit deeper so I can actually have have a tool here that can harvest the copper. Okay, we have 18 soapstone. And that should be enough. Just place this down. First thing to build with cobblestone is the furnace. The next thing to build with cobblestone is the pickaxe. Now, we also have enough extra stone here to make an axe. And considering we still have a lot of trees out there, let's do that as well. done. Okay. Let's take the furnace. Here's as good a place to any to set it up. It's out of the way. Let's put the sticks in there and I have a better pickaxe. Let's burn the one I've got. I'll come right back to this as soon as I chop down another tree. Now, one of the things you saw me doing here, chopping down the tree, it's going to be a lot better with the stone axe, but I'm going to spare you the, bo the boring part of just sitting here mm. chopping down the tree. We'll be right back as soon as the tree's down. We're back and it's raining wood. Tree is down. The you can see in the upper left there we have now 44 of 131 durability. That took a large chunk off of our axe, but much better than the wooden axe, it was able to chop down the entire tree. We still have some little bits of stuff floating over there that beehive that it wasn't able to get. Now that's a different than the forestry beehives, but that's yet again another story here. I'm just going to quickly clean all this up here, and, well, we got sheep, so you know what? We need wool. We need a bed. One sheep down. Did it drop any wool? Yes, it did. We'll take care of that cow in a minute. Got another sheep over here. Bye-bye, Mr. Sheep. You also can see here we're getting some lamb chop meat that's courtesy of Darkcraft. That's a deep hole. That's where we'd want to use the chicken. Okay, we're, we've got three wool, we've got a small hole dug, but it's at least the start of a place, and we got night time. Let's get in here with our stone pickaxe. Let's clear out a little bit more way. And let's 
use the make the bed and get to sleep so we can proceed on to the next day. What's this? Yellow fluorite. Fluorite is used as part of the rotor, uh, the Rekia's, uh reactor craft mod. Um, I have not gotten much into this. I don't really know much on how to do with it, but it lets you build big nuclear reactors, multi-block structures for them, and all in all, they're supposed to be pretty neat and be a really neat way of generating power. I can't tell you more than that because I've not done anything with them yet. Maybe we'll get into it in a later episode, but for now, we'll just pick that up in just a minute here and try again to just store that somewhere. Bed. Bed. Bed, bed, bed. Bed. Something tells me that sleep my head by a pile of nuclear material is probably not a good idea. Eh, it's Minecraft. All right, we've got morning. Now we've got this set up here. We're still burning off a bunch of this wood to make charcoal. Um, I like charcoal rather than coal for the simple fact that coal can be used in this mod to do a bunch of other things. Example would be with IC2, coal can be used in a macerator and crushed down to make carbon. Uh, and with that carbon, you can use it to make advanced plates for the advanced machines, as well as for things such as nano armor. All in all, coal has a lot of other uses that charcoal does not. We also can use coal in here to make steel, where charcoal cannot be used for that. It's just, in my opinion, a lot easier to save the, char uh, the coal and use the charcoal. And woods, well... Wood's pretty renewable, and we got a lot of big trees out there, so there's absolutely no reason to not use the wood instead of the charcoal. Okay, we've got a full stack of wood, and we'll throw that in there with our charcoal, and we will have, in just a few minutes there, another stack of charcoal. Now, we've got uh, some extra stone here. We've got a mostly broken axe. So, I'm going to go make myself another axe and chop down another tree, and then we're going to go through here and just decorate the area in here and plant, plant a few more saplings. Okay, second axe. Now, saplings, we've got 43. Let's take those. Now, as I mentioned before here, there is not much of a point in you guys watching this. Uh, so I'm just going to chop down the tree with my new axe, and we will be right back as soon as that is done. We're back, and this tree here dropped a few extra apples which we can make some use out of and we got a bunch more wood almost another almost completely uh, uh, extra for a uh, stack we've got two damaged axes here and thanks to vanilla minecraft we can combine the two to get ourselves one axe that's in slightly better shape now based off of what we've been able to do with some of the other trees this should be able to just take out another tree Ooh. See this here? This is thanks to Pam's Harvest Craft. It is an ender lily, or any ender pedestal. Uh, it is effectively an ender tree plant. We got ourselves one ender pearl already. We didn't even have to do any fighting. Excellent. Okay. Pam's Harvest Craft is a mu Oh, there's way too much to even go into here. First thing we, we can do. This stuff here is the Geisha Greens. This is... Um, part of the Choco Craft, which is a mod for Chocobos. Choco, Choco, uh, these guys are greens here. You could feed them to Chocobos to try and tame them. That guy doesn't like me. I just fed him three of them. And he still doesn't like me. Well, let's see if we can see if we can get him to like me with this. With all Chocobos, you can actually tell their gender by the actual by their hair. Now, at the back of this guy's head here. I got a collar. He's tamed. Or should I say she? If they have rainbow feathers on the back of their head, they are male. If they have no rainbow feathers, they are female. So that is a female chocobo. And I've successfully tamed it by feeding it the geisha greens. Cool. Chocobos will wander around until you actually can get some uh, a choco 
Wikipedia, I believe it's called, in order to actually give it instructions. Next, what I was going to mention beforehand is we have this tree here that has these little dangly things on it. This is a Pam's, tr a Pam's Harvest Craft tree. Pam's Harvest Craft adds hundreds, somewhere between 200 and 300 different food items, possibly more, to Minecraft. If you like farming and you like cooking, it, this Minecraft mod is for you. It's amazing. Well, with Pam's Harvest Craft, one of the things you do is you can get different trees that spawn in the world that have different types of fruits and vegetables, or just fruits for the trees. Now, this particular tree here, you can see it has this little box here with something on it. It's not doing anything. Well, the reason it's not doing anything is these particular leaves here have not yet grown. Now, if you look at this one over here, oh, I got a walnut. If you smack left-click it, it will actually break the block and show you what it is, uh, get it to you. Now, with these, you can just simply left-click once, and if it breaks right away, you it will drop the item, and then you get the other leaf there the go of the original one until it grows something new. The way Pam's trees work is you cannot actually find saplings for them in the pl in the real world. You actually have to make them. Now, most of the time with the Pam's trees, what you do is you take an oak sapling, and whatever type of resource you want there, the Pam's, the Pam's group food, and you mix it with the oak sapling, and you will get a sapling of that fruit type. Now, that works with apples, too, to get you some Pam's apple trees. Certain types of uh, foods will not actually work with oak trees. You will need, for any of the more jungle variety things, uh, or tropical, you will actually need to use jungle saplings. Example of something like that would be a coconut. Okay, so let's just plant these trees here and let's take a. Ooh. Yeah, we need to do some exploring. Okay, we've got some tree bits left over here. We've got a decent axe. Let's clear out this one tree here with this axe and I'll be right back as soon as that's done. We're back and that tree not only rained wood, it also rained a sheep. Apparently somehow a sheep got stuck up in there and it just fell to its death when the tree came down. Hey, not nothing to complain about. We got some extra wool, we got some extra lamb chops. So, considering we're in the need of food before long, not anything that's to complain about. Okay, let's just clean up here and see what we can do. Okay. As you can see here, that nearly destroyed our axe, but we should probably build a new one anyway. For the last of this axe, I know it's not the best use for it, but I'm going to kill myself a couple cows so that way we have some extra meat. Ah! Come here, you. Excellent. Two beef, two leather. Another two beef. And we have a broken axe. And we have a cow. Running around like a maniac. Okay, you can actually see in the upper left here with the cow, oh, we actually have a mod called Damage Indicators that actually gives us a report on the mob that we most recently struck um, and are looking at and what its current health is. This is useful to actually det uh, determine uh, how much damage we're doing to a given mob with our given equipment. It's also what's responsible for sh uh, for blinking in the damage numbers on showing us exactly how much damage we're doing to something when we hit it. All right. Now, with that sheep that we have in the air there, we got some extra wool. We have enough to make another bed. Not that we need one. We have some wool, some beef. We have some lamb chops. We have some leather. Hello, you. We have more chicken. If I can get it. If I can get it. Got it. Okay. As I mentioned here, we have some aluminum gra gravel. This type of gravel, you can't actually pick up with your fist. You're going to need to use a shovel. So we'll do that as soon as we make some extra tools. 
Ah, it's nearly done its little smelting work. And we're going to need to expand this chest. That's okay. We got plenty of wood for it. And... Done? Alrighty. Now this place here, as it stands, is pretty cozy. We got it a lot cramped. We got nearly nighttime, so we're gonna do something about expanding this place in just a few minutes here. Before that, though, I'm going to show you part of the Tinker's Construct series of mods. Tinker's Construct adds a bunch of different tools that we can, that I mentioned before that will let you create. Uh, tools using a variety of different things. In order to do that, we're going to need to make some blank patterns, a stencil table, a part crafter, and a pattern chest. We'll also need a tool station, and much, much later on, we'll need a tool forge. But what I'm actually working on right now is this drying rack. So let's just go quickly and create that. Uh, we need wood. We'll take you two. Okay, three planks, three wood planks, split across, done. Whoa, that's, uh, no, that's right. That's a lot more drying racks than I meant to make, but it's not going to hurt us. And we have charcoal. Okay, so what we got with these drying racks here is we can actually take different meats that we've, we've gathered and hang them up from the drying racks. Okay, and for now, let's just hit the bed. All right, we have daytime here, but we still have a pretty cr cramped space. I'll be right back after I've just widened this place out a little bit. We are back. Now, I was just going in here. I was getting ready to do, clear out a nice little room for us, and I came across this stuff. Atlaris ore. Now, that is part of metallurgy. Now, you can see that there's a little particle effect there that's glowing. This is a really, really nice ore. It can be alloyed with adamantium to make tartarite, which is the strongest metal in Minecraft, at least based off of the current mod set on this server. It's great stuff. It has a high durability, and it can be pretty well enchanted. Not as much as some of the other materials, but it has some crazy durability, and it is breaking a bit capable of breaking any block as far as pickaxes go. Okay, we will definitely want to get that stuff, but we're a little stuck with it on the moment, at the moment as to what we can do. So let's just finish clearing out this area a little more and putting our bed in here. Keep finding more of this radioactive stuff. So it tells me it's not the best place to build a, build a house, right? Well, it'll have to do for now. Now, normally with Minecraft, I don't actually go out and stick near spawn too much. I'll make a small little area near spawn so that way when uh, other players join they have a nice safe place to go and beyond that I will actually move off to another area so I can do what I want to do over there now let's go here we need a little more sticks twenty four and we will take some of our charcoal Excellent. Now we're going to take another stack. We've got plenty of wood, so we might as well make good use of it, right? You know what? Let's just do that. Excellent. Oh, do you see that in the background there? You saw earlier on I hung a bunch of meat, uh, of the cow meat on here, and it is now changed. We got beef jerky. And the chicken? 
We've got chicken jerky. Excellent. Now, it doesn't add quite as much uh, food as it would if you cooked it, but you're saving a few resources. It all depends. Uh, I myself, I don't like using a furnace unless I'm going to make the full use out of whatever I'm using as fuel, so the charcoal and whatnot. It just helps save that much, a little extra stuff. It doesn't matter too much later in the game, but right now, any type of resource we have is pretty much a precious, is precious at the moment. Okay. You know what? Low, low ceilings disagree with me. Let's open this up a little bit deeper. Okay. We're getting up pretty close to the point where I'm going to want to wrap up for the day, but before we do that, what I think I'm going to want to do is briefly get into Tinker's Construct. Now, we already got the drying racks here, which, as I said, they're a part of Tinker's Construct, but it's not the actual part I was hoping to get in. That's not what I wanted. Let's try this again. Stare. Uh, let's be fancy. Like that. And like that. Okay. So, Tinker's Construct. Let's be a little, let's get this all set up here. Oh, we don't want that. We need this. First thing we need with Tinker's, Const with Tinker's Construct is we're going to need wood. We need 56 sticks. The reason it's 56 is just practice from a lot from all the work here we need 28 uh stencils and you make stencils this way here 28 stencils will get us one of each type of tool that is available in tinker's construct for starting out there are some other ones that you can make but that is a little bit going to be advanced you need to actually find them in a village now each of the tinker's construct tools are made from a log and a stencil crafting table and a stencil a wooden plank and a stencil and finally a treasure chest Oop. eh I'll use them and a stencil leaves us with 24 stencils let's just go and get this quickly set up in the other room Now you don't have to do it this way, but I like keeping my part my part table hidden behind a wall, uh, or sorry, a part chest hidden behind a wall. You don't need it too much once you actually finish setting this up. You don't need direct access to it. Now basically, what you do is, as I mentioned, you, we created the 28 stencils. We used four to create the tools, and we have 24 remaining. Now with this 24, we can just go through here and make one of each of these parts here. Now. We aren't going to need them for all the tools that we need. We want, at least not yet, but it will at least get us started and we'll have something there so we don't need to make it later on. It's a lot easier to just make it all, all at once and not have to try and remember what we're missing and just get it all done. We have plenty of room in the parts chest for everything. Just finish this off quick. I might not have enough room in my inventory. That's okay, we have the part chest here. We will put everything in there that we can and then finish off. And the arrowhead's the last, and I have no room. So let's just go in here, put all the stuff in the parts chest, take the arrowhead out, 
and we're done. Okay, now with the parts chest, what you want beside it, somewhere beside it, is the part builder. The reason you want to do that is if there is a pattern chest next to a part builder, you will have full access to what's in the pattern chest from the part builder directly. Now that's a good thing. And finally, the tool station. Let's go out here. Take our crafting table. And we'll put that there too. So, we have a full Tinker's Construct set of tools here, and we have a small little room. We will take our bed, we'll put that in here. And lastly, we have just enough wood, planks, we will make a door. Ta-da! And we have a nice little hole in the wall. Okay, I think that's probably about it for today's episode. I will be back with you another day here to continue on after I've done a little, just maybe a little bit more cleaning up in here and getting the stuff from out there moved in here. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.